I, you know, I don't want. I don't care about the politics. I just want to see my friends again. Oh, yeah. I want to see everybody that we've all grown up with. I mean, you know, everyone's grown up seeing them, and I grew up with them. And yes, I want to see everybody again. It, now, would, be, it would be so fine to be able okay. to, to see to see Callahan all over again. Let's see Easterbrook, who, by the way, is an opera singer. Okay. And uh, Marion Ramsey, otherwise known as Hooks. Yeah. She was a Broadway dancer for many years. And Lance Kinsley and whatnot. And well, Lance, uh, <laughs> he's a golf pro. He's a screenwriter now and a golf pro. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Tim Kazerminski, Mr. Sweet Chuck. Yeah. Uh, he's a, he's a very famous, uh, screenwriter now. He, uh, writes a lot of episodes for The World According to Jim. Oh, jeez. Cause he, cause he and Jim are very, very good friends. Wow. That's amazing. I did, I did not know that. Yeah, that is. And then, uh, and then. G.W. G- Bailey is, uh, playing, uh, the co-police officer on, uh, 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 the closer with Kira Sedgwick. Oh wow! So you know, so and she, and she's, I believe she got an Emmy award for that, didn't she? I, I think so. I, I don't really know. I haven't really followed the Emmys. I, I don't have cable up where I live, but uh, oh, the closer, yeah, that's on TNT. Okay, I, I think I've, I think I've heard of it. So she plays the, um, she's a southern, she's a southern girl. <laughs> yeah. She's a southern young woman, and she's from the south, but she is just taking the job. Of assistant chief of police in a big, big, heavy metropolitan city in the north. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, because she has that ability to to, um, to to get confessions out of people, she basically she knows how to close the deal. So they call her the closer. Oh wow, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> because amazing. she gets people to say stuff that they normally would not even open their mouth to say. She is. She so just... you know what? So everybody's out there and all over the place. I try to keep track of everybody, but it, it, sometimes it's really hard to do. You get? <clears throat> do you guys ever get together at all, like once in a while, or? Uh, or what every was so often when possible, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I mean, I just saw, I mean, I just got together with Leslie Easterbrook and Marion Ramsey just recently. Okay. And we just seen each other, and I know that there are conventions now. They actually have, uh, o- o- over in, in Europe, I guess they have police academy conventions. <laughs> oh, jeez. I know. <laughs> how, how about Bobcat Goldworth? Well, he's one that... <laughs> Bobcat is still around. I hear he's working for Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Yep, and, that, and that's the last I heard. I'm not really sure what he's uh, what he's doing, but last I heard, he was working for um, Jimmy Kimmel. I know I know that he's directed before, and he's he's done productions. So, oh yeah. So you know, Bob's uh, he's a director. Bob's got, he's he's been a director and a producer before. Now, of all the films that you've done on the Police Academy, which one could you say was your all-time favorite? It's very difficult to say. I can't say one is a favorite over another because yeah. uh, each has its own strength. Well, I'm working, working with Mel Brooks is yeah. cool because. Come on, Smell Brooks. That's right. Uh, now, I'll, I'll tell you my personal favorite, and this is one I just rented. Uh, Police Cabby 4, Citizens on Patrol. I, uh, to me, that that that's a very, they're all funny. They're all good, and they all make me laugh. But Police Cabby 4, there's something about Part 4 that's just so interesting. Cause you, get, you get an all-star cast, obviously, and then you get Bobcat Goldwith, you know, who's uh you know, now the good guy. You know, because in part three he was the bad guy. You know, I heard he was. You know, I heard he was going to marry Nikki Cox, and that didn't work out. I'm very <laughs> sorry for him because wow. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, he could have been on Vegas. I heard that you uh, you uh, inspired the the theme song to Citizens on Patrol, uh, the part four uh, movie. Yeah, I work with a, a gentleman mm-hmm. named I believe it was Mr. Stephen Tyrell. Who went on to producing a whole lot, a lot of music soundtracks? Okay, including the West Wing. Oh wow, that's so cool, Mr. Mr. Tyrell. Um, he's he's big, 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 and but, I got a chance to work with him, you know, back then. Yeah, and it was kind of neat uh, because uh, you did a lot of the voices, obviously, or you, you did all the voices for the uh, for that theme song, and and uh, it, it's very cool because you know, uh, for you to be able to uplift your talents. In your role of all all seven roles in the police academy uh, movie, just to be you know Mr. Voices, you know they called you the the man of ten thousand voices, but I'm sure you got over ten thousand voices. <laughs> I can't even keep track of some of these things anymore. Now I I've seen a, a few bits uh, that you've done on uh, the uh, internet or that you uh, put on your MySpace page. I'm actually on your MySpace page right now as we speak. Uh, you put a few. Of your uh, videos that that you put on there, I like the Led Zeppelin one. That, that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty interesting. That's, I'm glad you enjoyed that. And how and how you sound a lot like Wolfman Jack in the beginning. That's uh, I got to meet Wolfman. He was a good guy. He was a really 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 good guy. I got to meet him a couple of times. And uh, last time I ran into him, he was uh, just before he passed away. He was uh, we were in Washington D.C. Oh wow. He, he was doing some kind of a specialized radio program. Okay. And he was really really nice. 
and you know, I miss my, I, I sure do miss folks like him. Oh yeah, because you know, there'll never be, there'll never be another, another one like him. Obviously. No, no, no. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen, baby. <laughs> Oh, and then how you howled at the end or whatever, you know, that, that's funny. That, that's, uh, now, I'm going to ask you to, to do a few impressions or whatever. Like, like I know you, you did that night at the Jimmy's. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's very cool how you uh, grew up uh, inspired by Jimi Hendrix. And uh, uh, do you think you could do a, a random voice impressions for, for the well, broadcast? Well, I'm, I'm right in the middle of a voiceover right now. I don't want to end up flashing my voice, but... <laughs> Uh, but what I can do, what I can do is... Or just do a few or whatever. Jeez, oh, well, I'm trying to... In what context? <laughs> oh, just whatever, whatever you think the public will like. Whatever you think, uh, the, up here in northwest Minnesota. <laughs> uh, i tell you what, I, <laughs> I appreciate, you know, just even having a career is, is been yeah. a wonderful thing, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, each sound, everybody's asking me which one's my favorite, I, I can't really say. Because yeah. That's like asking which one of your kids do you like better. I really, I really can't answer that question now. Yeah. Way. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I, I, I don't even know. I, I like I'm your like your 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 robot one or your kung fu master or whatever. That that that's gosh. that's funny. That that's. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, if everybody wants to have a little bit of fun, they can go to UGO dot com and, and and they can play the video game. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you, did you do that? That's where I I did that for the UGO company. No, I I did not know that. I they had uh, they have a little uh, they got a little, they got a little uh, little um uh. Like a Jeopardy type of game show where you get the multiple choice answers, and if you get the right answer, you get. <laughs> but if it's the wrong answer, you know, you know stuff like that. <laughs> and, and it's good because it's, a lot of the questions are related to movies and television. Yeah. And there's, a, there's a lot of fun. Oh, you know? okay. I think I know what you're talking about now. I think uh, you you did like 40 you did 40 questions or whatnot, and like name the yeah, or, something like that. And then you like name the sound effect or something like that. Yeah, or okay. yeah, yeah. But yeah. be a lot of fun with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen that, I, and I've actually played that a little bit. That's uh, that's cool. That's. Uh, but but all in all, now in your in your career, and I know you've had a, a good career so far. Um, do you think that the the acting community will will I mean besides the police academy, do you find yourself uh, uh, maybe in in a, in a future role here later on, like you know like 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 something different or maybe even a serious role or something? <coughs> well, there've been some. Uh, uh, well, like I said, I'm I've gotten an independent film now. So. Okay. There are going to be lots of things that are going to come up over the next uh, over the next few weeks and months. You know, there will be more things that are coming. Um, the new uh, the new film with a I, I end up getting a, getting a very interesting uh, time to work with uh, Tom Hanks' son Colin. Oh, really? You remember him from Orange County? Yes, I do. Well, he uh, he's got a film uh, that was recommended by Mr. Sean McGinley. It's called The Great Buck Howard. It's a, it's a Tom Hanks. And his son Colin, they're working together for the first time. Oh wow! And uh, it's John Malkovich. Okay. It's, and it's uh, it's different. It's called yeah. the Great Buck Howard. I can't even describe it to you, but it's along the lines of uh, if you if you enjoyed The Illusionist and what you call the Prestige, it's it's kind of it's headed it's heading along in those in the in that direction. Okay. But I, I wow. think I think I think everybody will like it. Uh, and also the new National Lampoon movie the, from the from the folks that brought you Van Wilder. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be in that one, huh? It's called uh, it's called Robo Doc. Robo Doc, okay. Written by a doctor. Okay. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like if, if Van Wilder got a medical license, this is what you'd probably see. Okay. Wow. With, uh, with Alan Thicke and uh, and David Faustino. Oh, jeez, that's. So it's a very we just we just we just wrap production on that. Have you done a lot of stuff for National Lampoons before, or is this your first time? No, it's my first time meeting them. I'm looking forward to, to meeting, the, meeting, the, meeting the folks over there, because, you know, the folks that brought us National Lampoon magazine, Yeah. and that wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 magazine uh, article issue that you, you, no one will ever see again from the 70s, uh, late 70s, early 80s, it's called, If You Don't Buy This Magazine, We're Going to Shoot This Dog. Oh, okay, okay. You remember that one with, 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 the, with the Jack Russell Terrier? I think uh, I think we, I do. I, I, it's, been, it's been a long time. I'm only, yeah, 20, yeah, I'm only, tw I'm only 23, so I just... <laughs> but that, that was, you know what, that, that, thing, that, that cover is still controversial. Okay, really? Yeah, the one with the Jack Russell Terrier yeah. with, the, with the 44 Magnum in it. Jeez. I'm and, sure. And, and, his little, and his little eyes are going... <laughs> 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 and, and, and the title says, "If you don't buy this magazine, we're going to shoot this dog." Oh, oh they got in so much trouble for that. I suppose because they don't want people shooting their pets, you know. <laughs> well, you can tell. Well, it looked too real, I'm afraid. Oh yeah. But, um, but you know what? Um, working for Lampoon's great. Oh yeah. 
You ever get to meet, like, Chevy Chase at all or anybody? Oh, or? God, Chevy I met years ago. Oh, Jesus. Um, I, I, tell, I tell you what I'm glad I wasn't a part of it, and that's that, that roast uh, where they roasted Shatner. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was so cruel. Wow. Uh, Lisa Lampanelli is me, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I ended up, I ended up making the mistake of being in, of being in the audience one, one, one night, and she decided to just tear into me. Okay. So she, she tore into all of us. I mean, you know. Yeah. Every 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 single every single racial group is represented, Jeez. and and other things too. But she uh, she made sure she made sure to to address all of us. Oh yeah, I will tell you, man. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that is unbelievable. I, I felt sorry for Andy Dick because he got the worst of it. Yeah. Boy, did he get the worst of it. <laughs> Do you think they'll ever have a celebrity roast of Michael Winslow at all? <laughs> <coughs> Anything's possible, you know. Anything these days, because the the whole world has changed.